Hello and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Mount Mountains and today we're going to talk about character abilities in the context of the top-down engine. So uh, character abilities are all the, scr the scripts that will enable your character to perform actions, whether it's jumping or running around or pressing a button to open a door like this or shooting or uh, managing an inventory like that and being able to uh, equip weapons and do stuff like boom. Um, all these happen thanks to character abilities and having these separated ability scripts will allow it for the best possible architecture for your project. It will also make it much easier for you to create your own abilities afterwards. So how do you really see abilities in the engine. So uh, I'm going to go back to my scene view, switch back to 2D and focus on my koala. So right here I have uh, a koala character and you can see it contains, if I select it, a bunch of components. And uh, on top I'll find the, the physics things, you know, collisions, so I have the controller. And here I have my character script. And that script, the character script, acts really as some sort of central point, and it will be responsible for triggering abilities. And abilities are all of these, except you know health and kind of vision, but all the ones that start with character. So I have character orientation 2D, uh, which allows my character to flip in the correct um, direction every time I flip. Then I have movement, uh, response to input, and you know uh, tells the controller to move the character to the left or the right, and so on. Uh, I have dash 2D, and dash 2D dashes, as you can see, in any direction I specify. I have handle weapon, that allows me to do cool stuff with my weapon like that. Uh, then we have button activation, you know, when I opened that door before, that was thanks to that. Uh, fall down holes, which will let me... So I'm going to grab this key and button activation, you know, and fall down holes, let me die, actually. Uh, I have jump 2D, which lets me jump like that, and I get an achievement if I do it 10 times. I have character pose that lets me pause the game. Uh, character inventory is going to bind the uh, the inventory to my character and let me access it. Uh, and there are a bunch of other ones. Um, you can see them all if you go to common scripts, characters, character abilities. Some of them are specific to 3D. So we saw dash 2D in action just before, but uh, there's a 3D equivalent to that. Um, the reason for the existence of 2D and 3D abilities is that some of them, the logic can really be unified and it works pretty much the same in both worlds. Uh, for others, uh, like the dash, you know, uh, that was much easier to create a separate class, makes it much more readable. Um, then we have, you know, same thing for the jump. Uh, orientation in 3D is really different. Then we have Pathfinder that is going to rely on the nav mesh system to have a character in 3D move around and avoid vo walls and stuff like that. Uh, Ragdoll, mostly 3D. Um, and character time control. And this one, as you guessed, uh, I suppose lets your character change the current time scale to the one specified in its settings. Uh, every time you press the time control button for the duration of your choice and so on. So um, that's the kind of abilities you can create. So what does an ability do? Uh, to learn more about it, we can open, for example, correct time control. And that gives us this. And as you can see, this class extends character ability and it's going to override a bunch of its methods, such as handle input here, initialization, uh, but also process ability. And then it declares its own functions such as uh, time control start, time control stop. So to know exactly what we can do with an ability, uh, we can have a look at the actual base class. And as you can see, it grabs a bunch of references for us, so we can don't we, we don't have to do that in every 
ability. Um, and then we have an initialization method. We have um, a bunch of process. We have handle input, uh, most of all. Uh, and that's where we want to grab our input and, and trigger you know, a dash, a jump or something if the button is, has been pressed. Then we have the process abilities. We have early, process, late uh, to that, that we can override to do stuff really at update, but uh, that way you can you can make sure that uh, everything that is being done in early process ability will be called before process, before late process. Um, what else? We have animate methods. Uh, we have the permit ability that will uh, let our ability know whether or not it is enabled or allowed right now. Uh, we have a method that is being called for every ability every time the character flips. So you could do something special in your, I don't know, flight ability uh, every time the character flips. Same thing for reset. And uh, then we have a bunch of uh, sound effects related um, methods and a bunch of animator related ones. We also have hooks for respawn, for death, for hit. So every time your character gets hit, uh, you could have your ability do something special. And and that you can pretty much ignore. Um, so the character component is responsible for triggering all these abilities. And it does so using state machines. Um, it's a design pattern that will basically store current state and the previous one and by default, the character will use two state machines. So the movement state, um, which is accessed via the underscore movement property from any ability. So that would be uh, over there, movement. And we also have another state machine for character conditions. And that's uh, this condition here. So we can have a look at our movement states. So right now we can have no idle, falling, walking, running, and so on and so on. And uh, the same thing for character conditions. Character conditions, we have normal, controlled movement, frozen, posed, and dead. And the way it works is that at the start of the scene, the character will initialize all abilities and every frame call their early process, process, late process if necessary methods, and eventually we reset them on death. And other state machine implementations would usually only call the current state ability on update. This one doesn't uh, for a number of reasons, but mostly to make it easy to extend the system without having to rewrite everything or modify existing classes. So this means that each ability is responsible for handling its own input. It's uh, responsible for preventing the entry into its methods by testing if the current state allows it. Uh, for example, you can't walk while not grounded. And most abilities included in the engine don't use early process or late process, but it's a possibility if you want to do so. Now, let's say we want to create a new ability. Um, and we want that ability to be uh, the possibility for a character to go through walls. So I'm going to go and uh, in any folder, I'm going to just stay in this one, but you could, uh, uh, you know, usually you would have in assets, you would probably have something like a folder called game or something, and maybe you've stored everything in third party. But all right, in your game folder, you would go and create a, a C sharp script and you call that character go through walls all right and now you double click on it you open it into your id like so and we're going to remove all that and we're going to say we want to extend correct ability like that uh, and we also want to make sure we use all these and we also want to use the top down engine all right so we are ready to start um, I'm gonna open character ability to see what I can what I can extend and the first thing I will want to override is initialization actually um, if you go to the documentation 
you will see that there is some sort of uh, template that you can use and I'm, I'm gonna copy it right now and I'm gonna go and paste it here so I believe I should have done it this way yeah um, so this is the template uh, it's available on the I'm, I'm gonna try to show you the page wrong screen there we go um, so this is the top-down engine documentation and if you go to the bottom of it uh, you'll see there's an explanation on how you can create your own ability and I just copied and pasted that it's actually gonna be much faster than what I was gonna do so um, I'm gonna rename that into character go through walls and just copy paste that here uh, and here I'm going to remove that, we're not going to use that, we're not going to need any parameters I think. Um, we're not going to need animations for that one, so I'm just going to remove everything I'm not planning on using, I'm not using that. I'm going to I'm gonna use handle input though, um, and I'm going to remove that and this. All right, so um, the, the way I want my ability to work is I press a button, I go through a wall, I release the button, I come back into, you know, I, I phase back into the physical world. So I'm gonna need an input. I could declare a new input and so on, but that is covered in a different tutorial. Uh, what I'm gonna do instead is as this Koala character doesn't require time control, I'm just gonna steal my time control um, handle input method and so by pressing the same time control button I'm gonna trigger go through walls instead uh, so I'm gonna copy the whole handle input method and I'm gonna replace mine with it so now every time I press time control I'm calling a method and I'm gonna declare these two methods right here so I'm gonna create um go through walls um status for example method and so if I pass in a true status then I'm going through walls if I pass in a false status I'm not going through walls. So um when the button is down I want to go through walls and when the button is released I want to not go through walls and that gives us a good a good start now in my uh, go through walls method uh, what I can do is say all right if status so if uh, status is true but I can also write it like that um, I want to call my controller the uh, collisions on method so this is going to turn collisions on um, and I want actually that to be collision off because I'm going through walls and otherwise I want to turn them back on so um, this should do it for the ability and so now what I can do is go back into Unity, select my Koala character, um, add the go through walls ability, press play. And now I have a character that can move around, grab stuff as before, uh, still collides with walls. But if I press the K button, which is the one bound to the time control and thus on um, go through walls ability, I can walk through walls. I don't connect with anything anymore, uh, which is which is nice because like all collisions are off, so I don't pick up items, I don't get damaged, I don't uh, I go through walls, and if I release it, I'm back into the world of the living. So of course, um, this is a very quick demonstration of how you can create an ability. Uh, you would probably want to improve on that one by maybe having your character go uh, visually ghost mode you know uh, semi-transparent or something uh, you would probably want to make sure 
that uh, when you turn collisions on back again, uh, you want to make sure you're not inside the wall. So you probably would use process ability to make sure um, you like you release the button and as soon as you can go back as soon as you're not into a solid object then you go back stuff like that um you'll find actually tons of examples of abilities inside the engine as we've seen before go through them uh see how they are made chances are if you want to create a new ability uh just like i did with time control you can use one as a base and uh, copy parts of it um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all you have to know about character abilities in the engine. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.